Hello. We are going to continue with our one points perspective project. So you're creating a landscape in one point perspective. So draw your horizon line first, wherever it may be on your project. And then pick where you're going to put your vanishing point on there. So that's where all your parallel lines are going to be disappearing to. So I'm going to have my vanishing point there and I'm going to use that one point vanishing point throughout the whole lesson. So you can use a ruler if you'd like, but remember all points are vanishing to there. So I'm going to sketch this. This is my sketch and then my drawing, my final drawing, I will transfer this to once I have my design figured out. You must have at least two things in your picture that disappear to that one point perspective. So this would be one item and this would be my second one that I'm starting to draw. When things get further away, they start to look smaller. Do they actually get smaller? No. So I'm going to start drawing my fence posts skinnier and skinnier so that they look like they're disappearing back. And some of these are a little off, but it's just a sketch, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so once I'm done with this, Going to get my final sketch, which is a much larger paper, and I'm going to re sketch this onto here, taking my time more, making sure I get it exactly the way I want it, and then I'm going to outline it in either fine point or ultra fine point sharpie. are going to be painting this in so if you're making those lines really tiny it is going to be more difficult painting this in okay now i'm outlining in sharpie i messed mine up a little but no big deal because i can paint over the lines that i messed up Once you are done outlining in Sharpie, erase your pencil lines. Once you have this all sketched out, you are ready to paint. So you're painting this as a monochromatic painting. Make sure you have a mat underneath like I do, even though you can't see it on here. You'll have your paint tray with one color and then black and white and you're going to just paint this all in one color. So you'll be mixing tints and shades of that one color. So think about where you are placing things. If I paint this all the same color green, then it's not gonna really show my tints and shades here. So I'm mixing, let me move my paint closer so you can see it. I'm just gonna use the original color for this, but in other areas, I'm going to be mixing paint. So I'm outlining, it's up to you how you wanna paint it in. I find it easier to outline first. And if you don't stay in your lines exactly, that's okay. We can go over them then with Sharpie once it's dry and finished. Okay, now I wanna paint the house a different color. So I'm gonna take some of that green and either mix black or white to it to make it a thinner shade. I think I wanna mix a little bit of black into there. Make sure you have enough paint for whatever size area you are painting in. I have a little too much paint on there, so I'm wiping it off on the side. And then let's say I'm doing my roof. Now I'm gonna clean off my brush, swirl it around, wipe, and then wipe it on a paper towel. And I'm gonna make a tint. So I'm gonna mix some over here, add some white, 
And this is what you're gonna do for the whole entire painting. You're gonna paint it in in different tints and shades. If you have cool details and designs like I do on mine where I have a lot of details, don't all paint it the solid one color. Paint it several colors, numerous colors, so that you're seeing all those details that you have on your drawing. Once you are done, you are going to put this on the drying rack in your correct spot underneath your table color. When you are painting this, you should not have a single area where it is painted just black or white. You should be mixing the whole thing to paint it in. All of your spaces should be filled in. Have fun.